as Ruiz and Van Bonen lag off. So there's the lag. Wow. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz wins the lag. Alvin Ocean pops the nine. Pearl Ivanovic will be kicking himself. He should have won that match instead. <coughs> the first track. Got to win another four rack. Ruiz, Ruiz to break. Ruiz to break. Looking to put on another breaking clinic. Shaw and SVB before this, some trouble making that one in the side. Let's see how he handles this. No, still good. He's playing a different game, FSR. It's not fair. Yeah, it always seems to be at the minute. He's always getting a look at the two ball. So this tells us that he's probably so straight that he considers going forward, coming around to five. One of those angles where you question if it's enough to do, just punch it over with stun. Maybe he even needs to play stun run through with side spin, Extension makes cool. things even harder. Trusted his gut in the end. I think at the last instant he changed his mind and he said, I'll get there. Just swing it. He is a powerful stroke, FSR. And finesse. You can't get to be world number one without both. If you get straight in on the six, it'll be easy to leave an angle on the seven to come down table. Okay. SVB needs wins, doesn't it? I was saying just at the intro, he sits in last place at the minute. Tenth position, eight points. just as Perlovanovic missed the eight ball. In the very next rack, Albin broke and scratched on the side. This gives Perlovanovic ball in hand, and it looks like he's going to finally win the point over there. I would like to see the pool room in Sarajevo. He hails from Sarajevo. Francisco There's a pool really community, well. and he's playing so many matches, I think the owner of the club will be happy. Put up a big screen, everyone partying, Peglivanovic still winning. Yeah, it could be the place to be. I mean, for the owner of that pool room, the PLP event in its format is gold. Yeah, it could be gold for Sanjin because he's looked good all the way through. It really has. Not easy to keep winning these race to fives against these monsters. But he's going to win another one. That will put him up to 15 points from 19, just the four losses. Putting one rack to nail. Yeah, and it's real strong. It's not working. He lost his mojo, lost his touch. The brake doesn't work anymore, and he's now starting to take some speed off. But the magic's gone. Yeah, 
the magic might have gone from our defending champ as well. Albin is outside. Qualification zone in eighth. He's played three matches today. He's lost all three. That lacks pace. Yeah. Now, he can bank it with stun draw if he wants to avoid the five. His cue ball will track directly towards the three and four. So then he needs to ask himself, if, if is it then still worth it trying to go for the bank? No. Business-like approach, FSR. We said it before, he's one of three, four players who still looks very professional, very committed, very disciplined. We've seen him, of course, we've seen him miss, but we haven't seen him lose his head and go for wrong shots. I'm not saying the bank is wrong, but you can tell when the player chooses something and he's like, nah, let's take a swing. Now, is he going to try and use the five and the nine? Or is he going to use the eight? He's going to try and use the eight ball. And he's left a piece for SVB to play a similar shot. It's difficult though, this on the TV table. It's easier on the club table. If you roll this, clip it with the right spin on the club table, the right spin is more aggressive. It's easier to keep that object ball close to the long rail. Well, that works. Yeah, I think you were trying to play the blue two into the purple five, wasn't it? Just to keep it there. Found the little gap. Surely he's not getting the jump to here, is he? Well, this is this is borderline ridiculous. Yeah. It's nine ball twenty twenty three. They practice this. Yeah, but look at the distance. Yeah. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. I wouldn't like to play that shot. I would be scared to jump the cube off the table. Ball in hand. Please start the clock. Look at this with ease. I mean, the contact was also nice, right? The cue ball wasn't hopping after contact. No, he hit it nice. Like you said, this is nine ball 2023. This is the version we're playing now. Bill Strickland says many times the games has changed. It's not the version he grew up playing, and I think we could clearly see that as you finish 15 out of a possible 16 players in the league table. Just the four wins for Ilda Pearl. Bearing down against Skylar Woodward earlier today, he gave me the impression at least that he was winging it. A happy go lucky approach. It's taking a little more time now. Yes. Shane Alex, the thing is with Shane, because he's at the bottom of the table in 10th, he's only on eight points, so he's six points behind Sanjin Pilovanic. They both play the same amount of games. SVB has not got many matches left, has he? He's going to, uh, this is one of his remaining five matches. They play 24 matches total. So, yeah, like I said, one of his remaining six matches. <laughs> you said five. I'll call you out on it. <laughs> but that's what I mean. So even if he wins all six, well, he's level with Pearl Ivanovic. I know you don't have to finish at the top, but that just shows you the gap Sanjin has pulled away with. Yeah, but if you're in a bad spot, you know, you shouldn't try to be reasonable. Three. 
and make a true realistic evaluation you got to look for that glimmer of hope because even even if he would go rampaging now win five out of six play great pool and not qualify that would give him a platform for the next tournament instead of losing four out of six and then you know leaving leaving Leicester on a low yeah and at the end of the day we, we do expect these players to start beating each other so favors will be done eight ball and nine ball are not in the way for Sanchez somewhat but he can still strike the center of the cue ball so maybe normally he would like to play this with left spin possibly because of the eight and nine he'll choose to just play center another shot on the lowest ball though isn't it Alex again the shot on the two ball floats it in with outside spin life is good for FSR <coughs> it's all right keep getting shots but it's the fact that he keeps taking his chances he's really in tune with his game he's yeah. consistently breaking and running the balls you know, with all the success he has had and the quantity of high pressure pool that he has played it's not easy and i can only imagine i have no clue it's not easy to stay grounded to keep giving 100 percent airplane in airplane out fly from continent to continent and arrive there as the favorite again and proving it again Nice clean pot. Solid as a rock FSR. And Conrad Yushchishin. He's on a good run today. Two out of two. Taking the opener against Peglivanovic. Yeah, Conrad beat Nukioi 5 2. Then he beat Jason Shaw 5 2. And. What I think works for Yushchishin is that he started good. First two, three days. Then had a lapse. A little bit of a crisis. Recovered. So he has overcome that. That helps. No crisis for this FSR man at the table. FSR 2, SVB 1. Last rack. break, he yeah, took speed break. off. Trading two racks to one. Yeah, and there it is. There it is. And the nine. Shane Bunning wins the rack. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, if you've just flicked onto pool and you've never seen this game before, that is a golden break from SVB. He gets more than anyone in the sport because of the sheer power and the fact that he keeps getting the cue ball into the nine and you win the rack, it's 2-2. Two, two. That might well be the worst feeling as a pool player when your opponent makes the nine on the break. Um, yeah, well, one is okay. Rack five. But if that nine ball That's is moving on break. every break, you, you worry five, for another one. And I actually think, yes, we're seeing many golden breaks with this format, but we're not seeing so many caroms or early combinations on the nine. You know, what's the difference between a nine on the break or a two nine combination? The difference is you've got to make the combo. Uh, Push out. 
Talk us through this one, Alex. What what do you think the plan here is? <laughs> um, huh. Oh, huh? no, I don't know. Oh, OK, yeah, he's looking at making the two. He's looking at making the Push two and exposing part of the three. So in a push-out, you can hit any ball on the table. You can pocket any ball on the table. And then the same thing as we know from a push-out, SVB comes in. Shane, your choice. Has a look and then chooses whether to play or give back. Now the cross-corner bank is on. To the pocket low right, there's no kiss. If he would try to put the three ball in the middle of the short rail, he could, but it's a difficult cue ball. Control pass, please reset the shot clock. Yeah, I think it's smart, he gives it back. Yeah, again, if, if, if you're just watching again and you're wondering what's going on, after the break, you can always play what we call a push out. So Sanchez used the six to put the two. Shane had the option, he puts him back. I think his best chance is Extension to code. go for the three. And then if you miss it, miss it high on the right side, above the pocket, so it bounces back towards the middle of the short rail. Ooh, this is tricky. He's playing low. He might kiss. Shot. Yeah, and that is the beauty of what we call the push out, because I'm not saying he's outsmarted Shane. Shane will know that shot was available. But Sanchez had a plan, and he will have known it wasn't an easy shot, but he was prepared to take it if he got back to the table. Well, the actual plan, what he looked at and what Shane looked at is the cross bank, cross corner, but letting the cue ball roll, and they both didn't like the cue ball. And then Sanchez played it as aggressive as he did. Nice. So he's broken through the position. One more good shot needed. Not only does he break good, not only is he super consistent, he's also a smart player, Sanchez. And there, a lot of credit goes to David Okady, because Okady, uh, in whose shadow Sanchez has played for many years, Okay, he's a very knowledgeable player with a, a lot of three cushion in his game as well. And Sanchez has picked that up. So a great bank by Sanchez, then a kick shot to make the four, then a safety on the five. He's controlling the game. That kick shot for me is up there with one of the hardest when the ball is quite far away from the head rail. Very hard to play a kick and stick, isn't it? And you can see if you don't hit it dead full, the cue ball's never going to stay near the top end of the table. That was a little thin one. These cue balls are slow down. To the left or to the right. For me, to the right feels a little bit easier as a pot. Oh, he's done well. Floats it in. It's amazing. Another tournament, and again, FSR looking like the man to beat, even though he's not top of the table. But he's there, his game is there. That's it, takes the lead, wins rec five against SVB. Yeah, Alex, it's not just the break and runs, is it? He was in a tricky spot there and he, he played a good rack. <laughs> yeah, you can see his mannerisms, the energy that he oozes now. He switched on. 
ready for a good night of pool. It's not his only match tonight. No, it's not his only match tonight. Rack six. After Shane, he'll stay on this table. Okay, I'm break. Trading three racks in. to two. We'll enter the stage. Then he'll finish off on table two at the end of the evening against Woodward, Shane's buddy. Interesting position after Shane's dry break. He can play a bank FSR straight back. Attack the pocket with a chance to hold the cue ball behind the six. Shot. Now, how to get to the left side of the three. Like that, natural route. It's a skill in itself to see the proper angles on the screen. I think our, you know, JJ is the best at it to read those lines. Yushchisin on a roll. I'm watching that match a little bit now and again. Yeah. Acknowledged his fortune there. Extension call. The ball is playing good and he's getting the rolls. Yeah, he potted a four ball in that rack, Conrad. That was, well, maybe the pot of the week. It was an incredible shot. The one with the cube on the corner? Yeah, I like that one, Alex. Yeah, but, but the shot before, he fluked the three ball and for a millimeter didn't scratch. Well, I didn't see that one. I just seen the pot. <laughs> yeah, it was a good pot. <laughs> Again, Alex, it's another rack where it's not been all cushy for Ruiz. He's had to come with a good bank shot, show a bit of vision, then a nice positional shot. So he really is playing some good stuff. Yeah, world number one, reigning world Nymo champion. And he has the, the belief and the discipline and commitment to build a legacy a lot of passion and without a doubt will he lose some of that momentum at some point but for the next 10 years at least he'll be one of the names on every tournament that he goes to. Bada bing, bada bang. Straight back bank on the one after SVB's dry break and a run out. Doubles his lead, just one needed for FSR to claim yet another victory in the PLT. Just one more rack needed for FSR. He sits in fifth place. He's got two matches in hand against the four players above him. So if he goes on to win this point, he'll go level with Oig, Pagalayan and Shaw with a game in hand. Oh, visible. Look at the replay, what that cue ball does after hitting the low side of the nine. It arcs. There's still a lot of juice on the ball, and that's a big difference between his break and I think his break and all the other 15 players' breaks. We've seen many scratches this week when that cue ball came off the long rail onto the low side of the nine and then went straight into the corner. That's not going to happen with FSR's break because of that backspin now. 
long floater. Hmm, interesting. I thought he was playing a floating cue ball with a trace of right. Sneaky gap. Do you think he tried to move the six out of the way? He must have done. Yeah. Extension cool. Six eight carom or the six eight combination is makeable if he gets decent position. I almost feel for me that the six eight carom would be the shot to play for because the position the ideal position for the carom is easier. Yes, table two. Conrad is about to go four zero up. Over Sanjin. Sanjin's only lost four games in six days. He's doing well, the young man, so. If he goes on to lose this one, he's still doing well. I spoke of a 6 8 carom or a 6 8 combo, but maybe he has about half a pocket. It's tight. Looking good. He's looked good throughout the whole match. He's looked solid throughout the whole week. But now, <laughs> at what timing would that be? Stage two for things to really start clicking. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz wins the match. Five